The thing I would like to say is that... Sometimes the signs can be really difficult to see. Sometimes someone might seem completely fine. A person might seem 100%... A person might seem 100% okay, but sometimes all a person needs is to be asked, Hey, are you alright? Mm. Sometimes the person with the happiest exterior can be the one trying to hide the most sadness on the inside. So one thing I'd like to say to all of you, don't push, don't pry, don't force yourself into anything that you don't think you'd be able to work your way into, or that you don't, th you know, don't force the issue too much. But if there's someone in your life you haven't spoken to for a while, someone who you're not sure how they're doing, it might really help if all you did was find a moment to ask, hey, seriously, how are you? And some people who are really upset and some people who are hurting a lot, maybe they won't say anything. And I know this is the case for a lot of people. I know that uh, particularly, obviously, obviously anyone in the world can be, can be affected by this, but typically this is something that affects a lot of, a lot of men, is that there's a, a pretty special stigma around uh, men sort of, you know, quote unquote, sucking it up rather than being able to speak about their experiences. The interesting thing about that, though, is that there are a there are a great number of issues that um, that can cause men to com to commit suicide at pretty pretty exorbitant rates. And so sometimes I think what it could be worth doing is because I'll tell you something, right? I'll tell you that I think I think there's something about about a lot of men, and it's that even if we're well aware. That talking about our, our mental health and sharing our problems is the right thing to do. Sometimes it can be so internalized to the point where, you know, the, the idea of us trying to be strong can be so internalized that we still won't do it. It's not to the point where we have problems and we think, I've got to hide them. It's that we think, I don't have problems, you know. It's like you don't, you desperately don't want to admit that to yourself or, you know, less so anyone else. Exactly. Pride can get in the way. It can affect anybody. And when I say that this is something that typically affects men, obviously it can affect anyone. Absolutely anyone in the world. Men are allowed to be to be vulnerable, as well as women. Yes, absolutely, I agree. Everyone is entitled to the same amount of help as anyone else, right? And I think it's an interesting challenge to try and accept, you know. If you're a, I mean, I would I would say like if you're a guy, but really this goes out to everyone. While this is centered around the issue of um, uh, men and boys struggling to open up when they feel as though they might be struggling with mental health issues, this goes out to everybody. You know, if you feel as though you're having a problem, find literally one person in your life that you trust, whether it's a friend, family, parents, teacher work colleague, your boss, your manager, literally anyone. And just try and find a way of letting them know about it. Try and find the right way of saying something, you know. Just think carefully, like, what am I feeling? What am I thinking? And say it to them. Because, you know, I'm not sure if this is... <laughs> I'm not sure if this is a, uh, a saying outside of the UK. It might be, it might not be. I don't really know. Well, something that I hear my dad say a lot is, a problem shared is a problem halved. And it's a, it's a cute little saying, and I really like it. Mm. Yeah, you're right. Being around the older generation who've been growing up when mental health stigma was a much more powerful thing. Uh, I mean, mental health stigma is still bad, but it used to be much worse. And these people can kind of perpetuate those sort of problems. If there's anyone in your life that you trust, try to tell them about what you're going through. Try to say, hey, I've just been feeling this way recently, and I promise you it will probably feel just a little bit better. Even if they don't have the best solution for you, even if you just say, listen, I don't need any like serious advice, I just want to talk about it, it will probably feel better. 
and when you open up once, chances are it'll feel just a little bit easier to open up a second time. Right? Just talking can help so much. You're absolutely right. Just talking a little bit, letting those issues out and verbalizing them. This is one of the things um, about therapy that's so important. That's why, you know, the other, the other, ther the other charity, Rise Above the Disorder, is so important for paying for people's therapy. Yeah, as I say, thank you for the donation. Because in therapy, when I've been to therapy, what I've often found is that one of the most interesting parts, or really the most useful part of therapy, at least in my mind, is that what it really does is it helps you make connections to parts of your life you it helps you make connections between things you're feeling and things that have happened in your life a lot easier than you might normally when you think about your problems inside your head sometimes they can sort of get really tangled up and sometimes when you think about them inside your head they can really sort of hurt a lot more but then when you say them out loud whether it's to a professional or whether it's just sharing your thoughts and feelings with a friend, sometimes it can really come back and you can hear yourself and think, oh, right, well, there's this, this, and this, and that, right? Mm. Therapy makes it easier to understand your problems because sometimes they can feel so immensely overwhelming. It's almost like, God, I don't feel like there's any way I could fix this. But as soon as you say it out loud and you verbalize it, then it can become... And it can become a little bit less intimidating, and maybe you'll be able to do something else about it. You never know. And something else um, that I that I that I used to do, because there was one time, a good while ago, like a long time ago, uh, where I didn't have. Uh, someone else has brought this up in chat. When I didn't have anyone else to talk to, like literally, I had nobody to share my problems with. Like I didn't have a single person in my life that I trusted enough. What I used to do was I used to get my laptop out and I would write down a little document with what I was feeling on it. Just straight up, I would just write like paragraph after paragraph of I feel this, I think this, this is bad, this is this, da 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 da. And then it would sort of develop to the point where I would start writing like in a third person of like, you are this, you are that, or I guess that would be second person. And eventually what it felt like and one of the reasons why I found it comforting was that it felt as though the words on the page were another person talking to me. When I wrote it down it was, and then read it back, it was like I was reading the affirmations that I needed to hear. It's not perfect because sometimes your own perspective as someone with a problem can really start to affect the way that you write and the way that you think. But sometimes just getting the thoughts out loud and down somewhere can really make you start to understand them a lot better because let's be honest the way that our mind arranges thoughts and the way that our mind sorts our thoughts into little patterns it can do so in a very confusing way and so when we write things down in a normal way like one after the other then something can be a little bit more powerful a little bit more easy to understand and that is good and that is helpful sometimes there are awkward truths about ourselves that we don't want to address but writing them down can make it feel easier do you think it's important to get diagnosed i do but the problem with diagnosis is that it can be very expensive now as as you guys know last last year i had you know the luxury of being diagnosed but I have to sort of really take a moment to reflect and realize how immensely privileged I am to have been diagnosed at all. I am insanely privileged because I have this job that lets me pay for a nice psychiatrist and it lets me pay for my medication, lets me pay for this, this and that. Whereas in most parts of the world, you know, in America, there is no, you know, taking care there is no like public mental health care there is no free health care whatsoever and in the rest of the world a lot of the time if there is free health care there is an absolutely insane waiting list because even if you're on the verge of a full-blown mental breakdown mental health in the health services is not really seen as something 
that's an emergency unless you're genuinely holding a gun to your head at that very moment, in which case, you know, you'll sort of be taken to hospital and, you know, and all of that kind of stuff. So it's a very difficult thing to get around. I think I would, n I would never encourage someone to fully self-diagnose. I think that what is okay is forming a reasonable assumption about what it is you might have and then working towards a diagnosis, right? So the worst thing that you can do, let's say, for example, you have trouble focusing. You might think you have ADHD and making that assumption is completely fine. I made that assumption before I was diagnosed with it, right? Um, and it, la it made, led to me making a few assumptions about my life. What I would say, though, is that the problem comes when you haven't spoken to a doctor, you haven't spoken to a psychiatrist to get an official diagnosis, and then you go around telling everyone, I have this, I have that. Because what it can lead to is misinformation, and it can lead to some people getting confused and making incorrect assumptions about themselves, which can sometimes be harmful. And if anything, sometimes assuming you have something can, uh, when maybe you actually might not have it, you might have something completely different, it can lead to you making the wrong choices for yourself, and that can be dangerous as well. The best thing that I would recommend is to, and obviously I'm not a professional, this is just in my experience, because I lived for many, many years and never knew what I had. What I would say is to find, come to a reasonable assumption about what it is you think you have, and then try and find the right way of dealing with it in your own way. Try and find home remedies that manage to help you deal with this, this, and that, and make sure that you can live in your day to day. Make sure that you find, make sure that you can find a way of saving up to speak with a professional. And then once you've been diagnosed, floodgates kind of open, and then you can find much more effective treatment than anything you could get at home. So many mental health medications are controlled substances, and they're very, very difficult to get the hang of, and also very dangerous, very dangerous to have if you make an incorrect assumption about your um, uh, about your condition and um, you know they, they some of these medications for mental health are so powerful very useful for people who actually do have those symptoms but let's say let's say for the sake of argument right you might be having trouble focusing let's stick with that right having trouble focusing and then you go, also illegal in some countries. Very true, very true. TikTok is not a doctor app, 100% true. Sometimes what you might do is you'll be on TikTok or YouTube Shorts or wherever, you'll find some influencer therapist talking about how if you felt this very basic emotion, you probably have this. And what this can do is it leads to a really unhealthy assumption that what if I have this? And maybe, maybe you do. Maybe you genuinely do. And it can really help you understand more about yourself. But maybe you don't. Maybe you have something more serious. Or maybe you have something entirely different. They've described a very vague... What they've done, essentially, as any social media influencer does, what they've done is they've listed a series of very vague symptoms in an effort to engage with the maximum amount of people. They might say, if you've ever felt sad, you have chronic depression, which is just a fucking blatant lie. I get sad all the time. I don't, I don't have chronic depression. That's a very serious thing. And if I were to start seeking out, perhaps not legally, medication for chronic depression and started taking that regularly without a doctor prescribing the right dosage, I would be putting myself in incredible danger, right? So make a reason, that's what I'm saying. Try to understand your symptoms in a way that makes sense to you, but don't rush and don't try to assume that you have this or have that because at the end of the day, what they are is just something to help you understand more about yourself. But the only one who understands everything there is to understand about you is you. And you probably know the best thing to do in order to help yourself feel comfortable, in order to assert your own boundaries, and so on and so forth. Thank you guys for 79k, by the way. So, 
When it comes to the subject of self-diagnosis, I will keep reiterating this. Find a reasonable idea about what it is that you may or may not have. Find ways of coping with the symptoms that you have and work towards eventually getting a proper diagnosis in a way that makes you feel comfortable. Because even though it would be lovely to be able to fully self, like if, if everyone could just magically diagnose themselves and get the medication they need, we'd be living in a perfect world. But the unfortunate fact of the matter is we don't live in a perfect world and there is no perfect advice. There is no way to wind up in exactly the right place. And even I, being as absolutely privileged as I am and as lucky as I am to have people as supportive as you in my life, helping me get diagnosed and helping me find the right medication, I still wait months for appointments. I still pay hundreds and hundreds of pounds for those appointments. And then when I finally get prescribed medication, maybe the dosage is wrong. Maybe the medication itself is completely wrong. And I wait for months and months more to change that. It is a system where we're living in a time where it's going through the most change it's ever been through. And we unfortunately need to deal with the fact that the system is far from perfect. So all we can do is to look after ourselves. All we can do is find ways of making sure that we personally are safe. And the right way of doing that, the right way of staying safe, the right way of taking care of ourselves is to find what makes us comfortable, find what makes us happy, find the people that we trust, and try to find a way that we can enjoy our lives to the best of our ability and eventually to trust that one day we will find our way through this terrible, weird system and we will find out the truth about our minds. And once we do, things will be better. So, yeah, to sum up, uh, don't fully self-diagnose. Remember that, uh, the people who are telling you that you have this, this, or that on TikTok are deliberately trying to appeal to your emotions so that they can get likes and clicks on their views, which is, uh, disgustingly unethical. Um, and what you should do is do your own independent research, be thorough, come to a reasonable conclusion about what it is you may have don't assume you have it but based on the symptoms that you already know you feel try and find ways of dealing with it in your own life that will not affect you in the long term do your best i know it's hard i know it's really hard sometimes do your best to stay away from unhealthy coping mechanisms like addictive substances alcohol drugs or perhaps other ways of dealing with it like self-harm and find healthy coping mechanisms. Find anything that you can do to help yourself deal with what you're dealing with. And eventually, one day, I guarantee you, you will, and I don't mean this is a maybe, you will find help. It will reach you. You just have to be able to, uh, to believe in it. There's a little movie uh, that I shill every day, and I don't care what any of you think. There's a little line from uh, the best Star Wars film. It's called Episode Eight: The Last Jedi, and it's made by Ryan Johnson, who can never do wrong in my mind. Hope is like the sun. If you only believe in it when you can see it, you'll never make it through the night. So, believe in hope when you can see it. Exactly. So believe in hope, even when you cannot see it, okay? I'm not going to go on, because I'm on something more serious right now, but that's let that be something inspirational to you, okay? Because it can be so difficult to believe that you will see something, or see change, or see hope along the horizon. But as long as you believe in it, even when you can't see it, eventually it will find you. The only thing, the only thing that can stop that is if you give up. The only one thing that will prevent hope from finding you, because eventually it just will. The only thing that can stop that is if you give up. the one only thing, and that decision 
the decision to give up will always be in your hands. No matter how terrible things are, no matter how awful, awful, awful every day of your life can feel, the decision to end that life will always be in your hands. You, no matter how terrible ev waking up every day might feel, you will always have a choice. You will always have a choice. So don't forget it, okay? Just listen. Something else I kind of want to say. Um, because I think a lot of what I've been saying is based on the self. It's about how you feel in this situation. It's about how um, if you're going through something, you know, the things that can lead you to maybe want to take your own life. But something else I want to say is that the impact were you to make that choice I don't, I don't want music on for this I just, want to be, I just want to be very serious for a second were you to make that choice were you to take the decision make the decision to take your own life because your emotions are too difficult for you to deal with I understand how that feels. I absolutely do understand how it feels for things in your life to be so immensely difficult to process and to deal with that stopping that and just ending it feels like the best possible option. The main thing I want to say is that you, this will affect so many more people than you could ever possibly imagine and I wouldn't normally believe in guilt tripping <laughs> but you have to remember how terrible think about your experience the grief you might be feeling the terror the sadness everything but then, when you have the urge to just stop it all, you won't realize. Because the thing about being trapped in that mental fog, you feel very alone, don't you? You feel extremely alone, and you forget how much support you actually have. I know some people have more support than others, but no matter who you are, there will be someone, maybe just one person, who is just destroyed by what you chose to do. Take a moment to think about your parents. If you don't know your parents, take a moment to think about your friends. If someone else takes care of you, think about them, your guardian. If you have a partner, think about them. If you have kids, especially, really, think about them. There is no, there is no knowing the impact that you will have on the people in your life if you make that choice. I guarantee no matter what you're feeling, no matter how hard it might feel to get up every morning and to do something, the impact on the people in your life will be greater than you can possibly imagine. So, if you're going to do anything, think about the people who have Im impacted you in your life. Think about teachers that you might have enjoyed. Think about friends that you hung out with when you were young. Think about pets you might have had. Think about 
the lot. I want you to imagine something for me. I want you to imagine that when you were, let's say, 10, you moved. Before you moved, there was a kid in your neighborhood that you used to play with every now and again, right? You didn't know them terribly well, but you did play with them, you know. You'd go to the park every now and again, and then one day you moved away and you sort of forgot about them a little bit. Imagine however many, however old you are now, however many years would have passed since you were 10 years old, and you're reading the news, or maybe you hear from a friend, but they're dead. Think about how surreal that is to know that that person's life, wherever it ended up, is now gone. And even though you didn't know them too well, just take a moment to stop and think. Think about how that makes you feel. Someone you barely knew, because we're human beings, right? We're human beings. And Everyone's suffering affects us in a way. We barely know them and think about how that makes you feel. Then think about the amount of other people as disconnected from them as you are that might also hear that news. Think about the amount that it might affect them. And then with how much you're struggling, with how much you're afraid with how sad you are about their passing. Think for just one second about the people who are actually close to them. Can you imagine that pain? Unless you've been close to someone who has passed away, I don't think you can. So that, I think, is my closing statement. I really have to get set up for the collab. For that's my ending statement, and that's all I have to say. There will never be an excuse for giving up. And no matter how hard it might be, no matter how much you might be struggling, there will always be someone who cares about you. And that will always be someone that you have the chance to destroy by making that choice. So, even if you've been close to it, maybe if you've even tried to before, don't feel bad, because you're going through a lot, and that's okay. But what I want you to do is really think about how many people in the world love you, how many people know you, and remember how important and how special you really, really are. No matter who you are, I don't care how worthless or how unspecial or how pathetic you think you are, you're wrong. It's like I was saying earlier, ev I was saying yesterday or wherever, everyone on the entire planet, every single person is special. And so are you. And I'd be very upset, and I know that those close to you would be very upset if you never let yourself live long enough to find what was so special about you. So yeah, end of story is the world loves you more than you realize, so think twice before you give up on it, because lots of people out there love you a lot, okay? Truly are one in a billion. Thank you. But I, personally, I think that everyone is. Okay. It's hard not to feel helpless. No, you're right. No, you're right. It's really... It is hard not to feel helpless. We all do a lot of the time. But is that a reason to completely give up? Is that a reason to do that to people in your life? Is that a reason to 
stop trying and expect never to see anything improve? No, I don't think so. Even if it feels like it is, all you have to do is not make that choice. Just keep moving. No matter how hard it is, just keep moving. I think it was, who was it, Martin Luther King Jr. who used to say, if you can't run, then walk. If you can't, uh, if you, if you can't walk, then crawl. But no matter what, we must keep moving forward. And obviously he was speaking about, you know, uh, uh, the, pro the progress of equality in America. But I kind of think it applies here as well, you know. Just keep swimming. I think the one thing I want to say is that I don't want anyone who might be going through these feelings to feel the pressure, I would say, of feeling like there's a million people who are relying on them. So, I don't want anyone who is struggling with suicidal thoughts to think about, to feel as though there's this immense pressure, you know, but what I would say is that if you think that you're, you know, letting people down now, you know, if you're sort of running out of self-esteem, if you feel terrible about yourself, you know, you feel like nobody really cares about you, I promise you, that giving up isn't going to solve that. There are lots of ways of making things better, and you will find them. Things will get easier. You just have to believe it will. It will get better. It will, it will, it will. It will, it will, will, it will, it will. 